All right, so if you have been using Power Automate recently, this is mid-November 2023, right around the time of Microsoft Ignite, uh, you may have noticed that the default editing experience when creating a new flow is now a little different. Um, some people love this, some people hate it. I'm more leaning toward the side of not liking it a whole lot, but I'm seeing that there's some improvements, just not a whole lot. But the reason for this particular video is to point out um, one thing in one thing specifically to keep an eye out for if you are using power out of if you're building a lot of flows where you you're um, using the when a form is submitted trigger in Microsoft Forms. Um, so I built a lot of flows like this. I have a lot of people using forms and they want to do stuff with the data that comes in through that form. And there are a couple of changes to the default settings in this new editing experience that are causing a little bit of grief. So I want to put something out here to explain how to get around that. Uh, now, first off, I have a quick survey I put together here called New Power Automate Experience Survey. Just saying, do you like it? And then how likely are you to recommend this? So two questions, very simple. I'm going to go over to Power Automate and build a new flow. So I'll just click new flow, animated, I'm sorry, not animated, automated cloud flow. And I'll just call this demo new PA experience. All right, and then I will select when a new response is submitted from the Microsoft Forms connector and click Create. So you'll see it's now in the new Copilot enabled woohoo uh, editing interface. First thing I'm going to do is turn that off because don't get me wrong, I think Copilot has a lot of promise, but my experience with it so far in Power Automate is that it's just not helpful for me. Uh, it may be helpful for people who, you know, are new to using Power Automate that, that don't necessarily, you know, know what they want to do or know what they need to do in Power Automate yet. But for me, I just find it to be a little backwards. I've already kind of figured out the pattern for how I do things, typically. I may take another look at it a bit later. Anyway, um, so the first thing you'll see is that when a new response is submitted, that's our trigger. If I click on that, uh, I need to give it a form ID. So this is just as it ever was. I need to find that. There's my form now. Just as in the past, it's only showing personal forms. So if you are using a group form, you still need to go to, you know, basically go to your form. Um, so if I go here and just open up one of my Let's say my policy proposal form for my, um, this, is, this is a group form. I would need to basically get the form ID from the URL to plug in there as a custom value if I wanted to trigger on that form. So that's the same as it ever was. You won't see group forms in this list, only personal forms, and that's fine. Now, what I typically do is I'll, select the form and then the first thing I always do in a form triggered flow is add a new action now it really bugs me that it doesn't automatically that this search box does not automatically take focus I need to actually click there to say you know get details because I know that I want to add a get uh, response details. So there is the get response details action. And maybe there are some benefits of that new interface. I'm not saying there aren't. I'm just saying it bugs me that I have to think about going over there and clicking that to, to input the thing I'm looking for. All right. So let me select the form again. This is all known. Now here's the, 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 main problem that people are running into. Uh, when I go in here and say unique identifier, now I want to get the response ID because I want this to run when a form is submitted. So there should only be one response ID. So when I click the uh, dynamic content button there, you'll see I don't have response ID. I have list of response notifications response ID. Um, which is different because it says list of, I know that this is going to be an array. So if I select that, then it's putting 
the get response details inside of a for each loop or apply to each loop. Uh, and that's understandable when you're working with a list of things or an array of things. The problem is that I'm not expecting that. Uh, and as it turns out, the problem really is that in the trigger, so I'm going to go back to the trigger action here, uh, there is a setting called split on. And basically what this does is when it's set to off, it's going to essentially listen for a period of time and anything, any actions that will cause the flow to run within that span of time count or are, are going to be handled as one, or, or I should say it's going to be handled in one operation. So it's going to get, if there are three operations in the space of 10 seconds, it's going to get all three and then f run the flow for each of those. Um, what I want is an instantaneous thing. So basically I'm just going to toggle that to split on and then in the array field here, tr select trigger outputs body value because I want one row, one form submission to equal one flow run, and that's it. So now that I have done that, uh, I can collapse this back down, go back down to my response details, and go to the parameters of that. And then when I look in the dynamic content, now I have an individual singular response ID. So I can put that in there and then drag to move. Now, this is one of the things I do kind of like I, I in the past I've had all sorts of weird issues with trying to move an action around inside of a flow where it wouldn't drag properly so I do like that it is a little more um, effective re responsive it, it, it doesn't give me as many problems moving actions around inside a flow um, now one of the other things is that I I, I don't like the new interface or new experience is that I'd like to be able to just, well, actually I can right click and delete that. Uh, I tried that before and it did not work. Um, not sure why it's working now, but that is handy to know because, okay, so you can right click and delete those items. In when I was playing around with this earlier today, I basically had to open up the details panel, go up here and click delete in order to get rid of it. Uh, so just wanted to cover those couple of things so make sure that you are aware uh, that you still need for a group form still need to get the form ID and for uh, if assuming you want to only run it for the individual response to the form uh, because I'll be honest I have in all the work I've ever done with forms um, I've never seen a situation where a single flow triggered and based on more than one form submission. It, in, in my experience, it's always been submission, flow run, submission, flow run. So I don't understand why that, why the split on is defaulting to off, but now that you know you can turn it on, select that array and you're good to go. Uh, all right, so that's it for today. And as I, get more familiar with this experience. If I find other um, gotchas or problems, I will try to highlight those and bring them to your attention. All right. Thank you all and have a great day.